Yes everybody, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Today we've got a brand new video all about creating thumbnails. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial uh, if you haven't got Photoshop and to create a hearty and thumbnail for in particular football manager videos. And all of the tricks that I'm going to be using today or styles are easily achievable in any program similar to football, um, to football manager, to Photoshop or Photoshop itself. So all the tricks and all the styles you'll be able to replicate in any of these programs. For today's video, we're going to be using a program called Photop. Um, that is an online image editor. It's the website that I use at work if I ever need to do a quick edit on something for a work campaign or anything like that and I haven't got Photoshop to hand. Um, but I'm going to be showing you how it works and so on. You can open Photoshop files with this. Um, so if you have got a, a Photoshop, what they call a PSD file, you can have that as well. But we're just going to be creating a thumbnail uh, in there and uh, to see how it goes. I'm not sure why that's there, but here we go. Photo P. Uh, so that's just photop.com. And we're going to be creating a thumbnail in this today. As I say, if you've got GIMP, if you've got Photoshop, you can do all the styles, everything similar, really. So uh, today's thumbnail I'm going to be creating is for an upcoming video. The video probably will be out before this video. Uh, it's going to be a football manager experiment called What If Harland Chose England? Um, so if you watch the video, you'll sort of get what it's about. Um, so easy, nice and easy to start off with. You want to go file new project. Um, you'll see here it's got some templates. So if you like some of these as a thumbnail, uh, you know, you do you. Um, the dimensions, well, I'm just called this Harland. Uh, the dimensions you want to use are, you can use 1280 by 720, but I would use 1920 pixels, so 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. Um, uh, uh, I mean, DPI isn't, isn't essential, we'll keep it at 72 for the time being. Um, and obviously you can see, obviously it gives you different sizes. If you went on to uh, social, I think it's got that in 1920 by 1080 as well as standard. But yeah, we'll click create. Don't click any of these because it will give you all the layers. Unless you like one of these, I mean, go for it. But we're just going to click create on that. So you've got this canvas size now. So 1920 by 1080, really that is a 1080p size. Um, so if you're doing 1080p HD videos on YouTube, obviously this is a good size for that. If you want to show your thumbnail at the start of the video, it'll just slot straight into that. I'm pretty sure 95% of you watching this video, if you're looking to create thumbnails, are going to be doing it as 1080p. So, first things first, obviously with Harland, we want to create the background. The background is quite an essential part of the thumbnail. That is the part that's just going to sort of be there. It's not going to be a main attraction on the thumbnail, but that is essential to make everything else on the thumbnail look good and make everything pop. So, for this one, we are going to be use, you know, because it's... Uh, Harland and it's um, because it's Harland and it's England. Maybe we start off with Wembley Stadium. So I've just done another tab here. I've just searched Wembley Stadium up. And what you want to do, if, especially if you're using Google Images, you want a big photo. So a big, in, a big in terms of size and in quality. So the easiest way to do this on Google is when you choose which photo or when you Google which photo you want, you click Tools here and Size. You want to be at least large. And you'll see here then when we click on some of these photos, you hover over them, you've got the sizes there. 2048 by 1152 is bigger than our canvas, so the quality of it is going to be good. I think it'd be nice to get some sort of the ground in there. This one's a little bit smaller, but still in terms of size, it'll be all right. Or something like this. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not going to mess around too much. Let's go with something like that. And the easy, easiest way to do it, you can save the image as or just copy image. We go back to Photo P and paste, so Control and V. Uh, let's just click allow there and you can see here our image is on there So what you want to do to transform it uh, on Photoshop you can click Control T But on Google Chrome that opens a new tab so don't do that um, What you'll want to do is to click transform controls here and you should see these lines uh, These little boxes on the side pop up which means you can scale it up and down Now what you want to do you don't want to just stretch this and size it to whatever because straight away that just looks crap so Let's click escape on that. We get our transfer controls again, our transform controls again, and you want to be holding shift. You want to be holding shift when you resize, and as you can see, that keeps everything in scale, and uh, that keeps everything in proportion. And then we just click enter when we've done that, and we can just sort of size it however we want to size it. And there's a the background. So that, obviously, straight away is, is a nice start to the background, but it is a little bit, possibly a little bit in your face, a little bit to, to start with. So we need maybe a colour overlay, 
to go on that. So uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it on Photoshop or Photo P. You can double click the layer and it'll come up with uh, layer styles. I will click color overlay. I think reds are probably a good place to start. We can always change this later on. I'm not going to go with a bright red. I'm just going to go with like a, a duller red, like a, a off off red. And then obviously you can't really see Wembley there. So what we want to change is the opacity, which is the amount you can see it. And maybe just drop this to possibly, let's go like 85% or something. So you can still see Wembley there, but it's a nice plain red background to kick us off with. So next up, we're probably going to... Um, Let's do, let's do the text now. Um, yeah, let's do the text. So the text again, probably or arguably the most important part of a thumbnail. Um, so obviously the text of this one is what if Harland chose England? So Harland is the main part of the video. So I'm probably going to start off with his font. With, with having a red background, I'm probably going to go with white writing. The text is the most important part and not just how it looks, but the actual font itself is so important. So I'm not sure on, on Photop if it uses the uh, fonts that I've got uh, installed on my computer. I don't think it has. So you have to use, on Photop to be fair, you have to use what you're given. So you can spend minutes and if you want to, hours searching through to see which fonts look good. I would never recommend like something like this, like say for argument's sake, if I just make this about 150, I would never recommend anything like that for argument's sake. It just looks crap. You can't even read what it says. So you want something nice, big, bold, and clean. Um, something with not not too fussy. And let's see if I can find one. I think that my always my go-to on here. Uh, that's a little bit too much, I think. My go-to on here is probably gonna be Bebas. Let me go and find Bebas. We can search it. I'm gonna go with Bebas on this one. It's all one of my go-tos. We've got Harlan there. We're going to stretch this out because, as I say, this is the main part of the video. Um, you can... That's pretty, pretty... Yeah, that's how we how we uh, do his name. Uh, on this as well, to easily centralise it, and this is a good tip for Photoshop as well, you can see there I've highlighted the whole canvas. If you click Control and A on PC, you can see up here you've got these little boxes. These, are the, these two in the middle are to centralise. So we always like it centralized. You don't want the, the Harland to be over there. So yeah, you like it centralized. And then once you've done that, click Control and D. So I'm just going to move that there. I'm probably still going to mess with the sizes and styles a little bit. Remember when you're resizing to hold Shift. And yeah, there. So we've got Harland. That's the main text. Um, I want what if Harland and then chose England underneath. So in Bebas again, probably a little bit smaller this time. We'll keep it in white. What if, maybe uh, maybe we chuck in a couple of dots in there. And again, we'll just resize it. We can mess about with the sizes and styles and everything and placement much better later on. Just going to quickly zoom in just to see if I can line this one up. I don't want it sat right on top of it, so we'll give it a bit of space. I'm using control, uh, control and minus and control and plus to zoom in and out, as you can see. Um... It's always a bit of a nightmare to actually centralise the canvas, so it's probably a much easier way. Can I get a navigator on here, maybe? Yeah, let's get a navigator on there. There we go. Um, so what if Harland... What if Harland, and then we want chose England underneath. So I want that probably the same size as the what if. So I'm going to click Control and J, and that will, as you can see on the right-hand side there, that will duplicate the layer. And we want to move that what if down, holding Shift again, because if you don't hold Shift, it can go anywhere. You hold shift again, it'll keep it all in proportion. And uh, we'll keep it there. We can centralize all of it after, and then we we'll put chose England. So we've got it there. What if Harland chose England? So nice, big, bold fonts. Uh, as, I can, as I say, we could change all of that. Let me just see if I centralize the what if and chose England. I like that a little bit better, I think. We can... We could do that, and we can also, I'm just going to see if this works, think it out loud really. If you want to make the text look a little bit different, um, i.e. we can create the spaces in between the letters a bit more. So we can just increase, no, don't use that one because that's increasing the width of it. Uh, you want to do your, 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 what is going on here? It's amended my uh, font, one second, there we go. 
it's your tracking. It's your tracking you want to do. So if you want to increase the tracking there, so you could do something like that. What if, and that sort of creates the whole size, but I think with the what if, it's probably a little bit better like that. The Chose England, you probably could get away with the tracking to be a bit bigger. I like that, to be fair. I'm just going to, yeah, I like that style. I'm going to get uh, this to marry up. Uh, another thing you can do is add uh, rulers. Can you drag? And you can. off. off you, uh, what you do is drag off the ruler, drag a guide. So my guide, I want it at the end of the D there. And the Chose England, we're just going to reduce the track in there so slightly. It's a little bit fiddly on this, to be fair. So you might have to type it in manually. Let's go 150, 160, let's go 180. So that's a bit too much, 176, one more maybe, 177, yeah, that's cool. So again, let me just double check and get that navigator up. That's possibly a bit too much there, is it? So let's drop that down again. See, the, as I said, the, the font is one, one of the most important parts, so you really need to get this bang on. And then we're just going to centralise that font. I'm just going to check both sides if it is bang on. Um, could probably lose another one or two uh, pick, uh, percentage whilst we get this perfect. And I'd say that's pretty bang on. So I'm just going to zoom out of that. And just double check it's centralised still. And when you want, if those lines are in your way, just click view and clear guides. This works on Photoshop as well. Works the exact same way on Photoshop. And, uh, yeah, we've got what if Harland chose England. So you probably want, I, I mean, I'm looking at that straight away, and I do like that style of thumbnail. Um, so you're probably going to want a focal point. Um, normally the best thing to do is find a picture. I have created one already of Harland in an England kit. Uh, but uh, for, uh, a, a website I always recommend is Football Renders. And I, I will chuck one of those in just to show you how this works again. Uh, FootyRenders.com it's called. Um, and as you can see here, so many players already cut out. Um, from if you if you're looking at big leagues, um, you know you got so many. Uh, there's even some in the championship. You know, as you know, I'm a fan of Wolves. You've got some here of players from this season already. Uh, Jotra in there. Um, but yeah, you got any? And again, they all save as a PNG. And you could, I'd always with a PNG. If I quickly show you, I mean, I've got one of Ian right here. If you click it, it just downloads it straight away, and you can just sort of drag it straight in. Uh, but obviously, this isn't about Ian Wright. This is about Erling Haaland. So, um, I've actually made a photo of Erling Haaland already. Um, I've created it on Photoshop. And I've done a face swap. So, if this is, again, if this is another tutorial that you guys want to see, perhaps, uh, do let me know. And, and if there's a player that maybe is out there that's not already um, as a cutout, let me know. And we can maybe look at that as well. Um, so, Haaland here. I'm going to just drag him in to... Here. And as you can see, I photoshopped him into an England kit. Um, so now it's up to me to decide how I want to uh, place Haaland and how I want him to look so he pops off the screen. I was originally wanting, I like that tech centralised, but now I might move it to the side because now we've got Haaland in that England kit. Quite, pro I think he needs to be big and quite prominent. And now what we can do, this is the beauty with everything being on separate layers. I've not really messed with the text. With all the text and everything being on separate layers, we can move it all. Now, I don't really want it central aligned now, you see. So what I'm going to do is right align it all. The Chose England and Haaland is cool. The what if we could maybe change? No, I'm going to keep it as is. So we've got Haaland underneath. What I'm going to do now is highlight all the text. So I've clicked Harland. You can click control on what if and click control on choose England. And it should highlight all of those. I'm going to control J to duplicate them all. And then I'm going to right click whilst they're still highlighted. Rasterize. And merge layers. So now as you can see, if I quickly, uh, if you click the I here, sorry, on choose England, what if Harland, the ones that we haven't uh, rasterized. You can see now that's all on one layer. So first things first, again, control A. Let's get that central on the page. And looks pretty good. But obviously what you can see there, the C and the H is a little bit hidden on the what if Harlan chose England. Again, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And I'm going to uh, double click that. And what you want to do, you want to make it pop. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You want to, you could add a stroke. 
which isn't the the worst way of doing it. Uh, you can see there, it's it's not horrific, but I always like to add a bit of a drop shadow. Um, always, I like to get it on 90 degrees, so it's right behind that text. I like to make the opacity quite deep on that one. The distance, not so far. I don't really uh, like a big distance, but the size maybe, and the spread quite big. But that really pops. I like that straight away. What if Haaland chose England? And that's pretty good. Just looking at that now, I like the actual style. And you know what? We've made a really stylish thumbnail already. Um, so some people will be happy with that. You know what? I'm pretty happy with that. I think, you know, if I went onto YouTube Discover page and I saw that straight away, I think that would pop. But there's a few little different options that we can add, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, one is being the FM logo. One is being a border. And one is being a little effect on the cutout or the render that we're going to show. Just to make that pop out of the page. Some of you will know that there is a style that I like to use quite a lot of my renders. Again, so what we're going to do, control J, which will duplicate the layer. If that doesn't work, by the way, right click and click uh, duplicate layer. Pretty easy. And the one underneath, so the one closest to the background, what you want to do on um, Photo P, this is the same on Photoshop. Click filter, blur, and I always like to use a motion blur. So it'll come up here with angle. Don't worry about the angle too much, but the distance we want to increase. And you'll see just behind Harlan there, he's just creating a little blur behind his head. So click OK on that. If you want to, you can sort of maybe mess with the layer styles and stuff, but I don't think that'll pop up so much. Hard light makes it a little bit yellow. I mean, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better, so you might not be able to see it on your side. But I'm going to maybe go normal, and that just helps it pop off the screen. You could even, I mean, this is going to be a big test of my cutout skills, is even put a stroke on it. The stroke doesn't look too bad, to be fair. But, I'm, uh, yeah, my cutouts, you can see there, it's a little bit soft. So, I'm going to leave the stroke off and just use a uh, a motion blur. You can always add an outer glow, which is probably adds that similar sort of effect, to be fair. If we go, maybe a little red. Um, and then just increase the size of it. You can see there's that little bit of a blur on him and a little bit, just to bring him, just to bring him and pop him off the page that little bit. So the next one I'm going to do is that border that I was talking about. Just uh, quickest way to do this again. Uh, this is quite a cool way as well because this makes the uh, cutout look uh, like pop even more. It's just again create a new layer down the bottom right there. We still got this Ian Wright thing here. Let me get rid of that. Um, you couldn't see that by the way there. So there's a little uh, behind me. There's a little uh, layer, layer logo here. Um, so or you could just click uh, file new layer is it? No layer new. Layer, yeah. Um, so we've created that new layer there, and what you want to do is get the marquee tool here, the rectangle tool, highlight the whole page or the whole canvas there, so you can see. Um, go onto this little tool. No, stay on the rectangular rectangular tool. Now, does this work? How I want to work it? I want to put a border on it. It's not going to work. Maybe okay. It's not going to work how I want it on Photo P. So let's change this up. This is a different way we're going to do it. So, sorry, yeah. Highlight that all again. You want to, if you're on Photo P, highlight the gradient tool. It's the same on Photoshop and click Paint Bucket Tool. Just fill it whatever color. Click Control D. Let's ignore that for the time being. Let's get rid of that navigator. Double click the layer too. On Blending Options on the top, Fill. We'll put that to zero. And on a Stroke, we click Stroke, click Position Inside. And again, you can see there straight away, we've got a little border. So it's worked how I wanted to in the end. Um, we're going to make this one a white one. And then, you know what? We're going to click this plus here and add a little red one as well. Just a little bit bigger. Just going to add, make the sizes of those both a little bit smaller, just because I think it's a little bit too big. We've got four on that. Let me make that one eight. So they're both four each. So it's not huge. And then we're just going to chuck that underneath Harland. So just above the background. Um, but just under Harland. So Harland is actually in front of the border. I'm going to make both of those a little bit... Oh, not that. Not that. I click Control T. I'm going to select both the Harlands. Increase those in size very... Oh my word, what is going on with my computer? Increase both of those very slightly in size, holding shift. I think it doesn't like me that I'm doing two at the same time. Let me try that again. 
Really doesn't like that I'm doing two at the same time. Reposition both of those. You know what? I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. I'm just going to get the Football Manager logo now. I've got the save. Pretty, again, pretty easy to access online. Just type in Football Manager logo. PNG. Because if you type in PNG, you'll get it transparent. You save it and chuck it straight in there. You won't have to cut out any of the background or anything like that. But I'm fairly certain somewhere on this computer, I've got the Football Manager logo downloaded. Or uh, there we go. We've got the FM21 one. It's a little bit more minimum, which I like. It's just gone under the thing there. So again, as you can see, that's there holding shift. We're going to resize that. And uh, let's make it a decent sort of size. Now you can see, obviously, straight away, that's a completely different color to everything else. So we're just going to double click that color overlay. We'll probably go with a, with a white on this one. Make sure it's 100% opacity again. Let's make it a little bit more dinky. There you go. What if Haaland chose England? We've got the picture of Haaland, which I created. The FM21 logo there as well. We could be really funny. We could add, um, if we wanted to, the uh, England Lions, maybe, on the, in the background of that. Let me see if there's like a PNG of the England Lions. There is indeed, which is uh, nice to see. Not the greatest quality, if I'm honest. I'm just going to show you now. I've just created one. You can see there. It's not, uh, not created, but I've got this off Google. It's not a big size. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, obviously, if you click, uh, if you want to get rid of the white on something like this, Magic One Tool, it's going to be a bit fiddly because he's got all the white parts inside of his face. What I also use is Select Color Range. If I click White, it'll get rid of all the white on that picture there, as you can see. I'm going to use this as just a little bit in the background. I'm going to make this fella uh, color overlay white. I'm going to change that opacity all the way down to about nine percent maybe twelve percent and again i'm just going to create this as a little uh little feature in the background which some people may not even clock is there uh, it's a nice little feature try and get three lines on there somewhere which is pretty cool what I'm probably going to do, I'm going to be really, really awkward and do that again, just to show you guys, you know, that I want to, I want to make every, sure everything looks good. Um, just going to quickly make that a bit bigger. Uh, these are like, like the subtle details, right? You probably won't even realise sometimes, but honestly, they make, they'll make a huge amount of difference. They will make a huge amount of difference. And that. So we've got the three lines there. I'm just going to make sure this middle one is centralized. I'm using the... I always like to use the marquee tool for this one. Make sure that is centralized. Oh, wrong one. Which it is. I'm going to merge those three together. I'm going to make that white again like we just did. I'm going to chuck that just on top of the layer again. Down to 12%. Rotate it very slightly. Make it as big as I can without it looking stupid. And there we go. So there we go. We've got a little bit of a background. I'm just going to drop that even lower the opacity. So it's very, very subtle. You can't even, unless you looked for it, you wouldn't even tell what it is. But there we go. A very, fairly quick thumbnail to make. Obviously, you guys may need to do it slower. And uh, obviously, a lot of you will be doing it maybe for now. Let's play series. Uh, but there is a quick tutorial without Photoshop. I've done that in just less than 25 minutes. And I've added <laughs> features in there. We've got the twenty, uh, the FM21. We've got what if Haaland chose England. And then even down the line, if I felt, oh, I've made a mistake on that. I've saved, like you said, I've saved all three of those text layers there. So if I ever need to change it again, I've still got all three of those. If I want to make a new e experiment video with what if whoever played for whoever, I can just change the player. Could change the text so make sure you save copies of that on this you want to click file save as psd if you save it as a psd keep it safe you can open it on photoshop gimp or back on photo p again but then what you want to do when you want to save that or uh, save this image file export as png or jpeg and you'll be able to use it as a thumbnail use it in your videos and so on as well so guys hopefully you enjoyed this video today if you've got any questions please let me know in the comment section down below 
be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and um, like I say, if you want any other tutorials, like I've done that face swap just there, you know, it's not unbelievable, at the same time, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at it, I don't think it's horrific, <laughs> um, let me know in the comment section down below if we can do a cutout, maybe tutorial as well, could even do cutouts on photo peekers, yeah, there's, um, there's some ropey ones out there, but I'd say always the key thing is hold shift when you're resizing, just to make sure everything's in proportion. If you ever think you're going to want to use the thumbnail again, duplicate your layers for your text to keep them safe and sound. But yeah, if there's anything that's confused you slightly in this video or you want to handle anything, just let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll uh, yeah try my best to get back to you as soon as. Until next time, guys, enjoy the rest of your, enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe and I'll see you all very, very soon.